Hello everybody, today is October the 4th, and we're going to be talking about Friday the 13th, part 4, the final chapter. Now, I have mixed feelings about the final chapter. I like it, and sometimes I don't like it. It just, it depends on my mood, for whatever reason. It's just, a lot of the time I find this, I find this movie depressing, and questionable while I'm watching it. Like, as of the other Friday the 13th movies, this is one where you genuinely feel bad for the people that come. Excuse me, because this is the first Friday movie where all the people that go on vacation die. Like, the final girl is the person that lives with Tommy Jarvis, his, his, his sister. Like, the, fi the final go trope is completely different. Because after you watch all the Friday the 13th movies from this point onward, it was always one to two survivors of the vacation crew. Part two had Ginny and Paul. Well, hopefully it had Paul. Part one had Alice. Part three had Chris Higgins. So you think to yourself, the ones that are going on vacation are going to survive. But this one, no. It throws you off for a loop. And it is annoying. Like, it changes your perspective of, of what's going to happen. I say this a lot about these Friday movies. I give them praise because they are good movies, except for a few of them. But this is the one thing I don't like about Part 4. It ruined the thing for me. Anyways, the movie starts the next night where Part 3 left off. Alright, got nothing against it. It ended with Chris getting taken away by the police. That's fine. It ended with the police hauling her away. But it took him that long to clean up the mess from part from, from part three. And there's helicopters, ambulances everywhere, carrying the dead bodies into everything. Even Jason's dead body gets put in an ambulance. It is a whole mess of things. Also, it's raining. And the intro... <laughs> well, the intro is before that, where you actually get a recap of all four movies that happened to this point. Where you hear Crazy Ralph, but this four movies of Crazy Paul's narr Paul's narrating. You can even see Crazy Ralph for a minute. You see the events of part you see part two's kills. You see some part three stuff. You even see some stuff from part one. I know it's all stock footage, but it's fine. The introduction, good, again, like it the introductions are always good with the Jason movies. I have to give them credit for that one. Corey Feldman's in this movie. And one of my favorite Jason actors in the, is in this movie, Ted White. Now, I would describe a lot about Ted White and a lot of stuff he did for the people in the movie. There was one scene where he almost quit the whole movie because the one girl almost the one girl had, was suffering from hypothermia. Ted White was a goat. He was a caring actor towards the other actors and actresses. I like him. Ted White is definitely my second favorite Jason to Kang Hodder. Anyways, moving on with the story. Jason is taken to the morgue. And morgue stuff ensues. We meet Axel who's eating food. He sets food on Jason. If you look closely, you can actually see every now and then that Jason's still breathing. Which I like. Nice touch, but they're oblivious to it. And you also see Axel's not professional at his job because he's about to do the deed. Wants to do the deed with the one nurse. That's okay. And... Just like in part three, part three is beginning. The girl just wants to watch the news when they meet up. Axel's watching aerobics porn. Quite different, but it's like, really? You're doing the news trope again where they talk about the same killer, Jason Voorhees. And fun fact, back to Friday the 13th part three, that was one of the only movies where they didn't say Jason Voorhees, where they didn't say his name. I thought I would mention that part. I thought that was pretty cool. I forgot to mention it in the other video. Oh well. Moving along. Anyways, as they're about to do their thing, Jason's hand touches the girl. And scares the living daylights out of Axel. Which, it's good to have some comic relief in the beginning. Like, that is funny. Anyways, the girl storms out, fixes her shirt, and goes to the mess and her two inventory. She drops a bottle of medicine, I don't know what the medicine was, and she starts to clean it up. As she's doing that, Axel's watching his aerobics porn again, just 
trying to make up for what he lost, I guess. And as he's doing that, Jason slits his throat with a hacksaw. Okay. Problem with this. Alright? I know in horror movies, people are idiots. But, dude, he didn't even make sure the ice door Jason was put in was closed all the way. He didn't double check it. He didn't make sure it was secure. He just, boop, figured it was closed. So this whole premise of this movie is all because of one lazy worker. And as after Axel's death, we cut back to the girl that he was spending time with. The girl was almost done cleaning up and she hears someone coming. And she thinks it's Axel, but it's Jason. Okay, how did Jason know what room she was in? For one. For two, how did Jason not get noticed through that morgue? Are they the only two people left in the morgue? Like, seriously? No one's gonna notice a man, axe mark in the face, walking out of the cold, cold room. It, it, it raises questions, like, what was going on with this movie? The realism is just out the window. And Jason kills her with a scalpel. It was a kill that got messed up with production, so there was that whole mess. It's just, just, I have a lot of problems with this movie, even though I like it. It's just, I have problems, and I and I have love for the movie. Anyways, after that, we see we see two girls running through the woods. Tommy's friend, Tommy's family, his mom and his sister. As they're running through the woods, they're talking, having them talk about Tommy's dad. As they're doing that... They, they talk about what they're going to do and all that other stuff. And after that, it cuts to their house where we see Corey Feldman himself playing video games. A Commodore 64. Now that was a good console back in the day. It's nice to see people doing kid stuff. You know, Tommy's actually being a kid, having fun. And he wants to... Anyway, his mom wants him to move the Commodore to his room because it was making too much noise. We all can relate to that. <laughs> Anyways, after that, cuts back to the to the travelers that are coming. A lot of them. Samantha, uh, two couples. And Crispin Glover and a guy named Ted. I forgot the name, so we're going to call it the couple one. Andrew and Sandra, and couple two is going to be Samantha and Braxton, because I forgot their names, so we're just going to go with that, and I'm probably going to change their names, because I can't remember. So anyways, moving on, they're talking, Corey Feldman messed, not, not Corey Feldman, Chris Van Glover messed up the thing with his girlfriend, and Ted's like, let me pull up my computer, beep, 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 says you're a dead, yep, my, one of my favorite Friday quotes, a dead, it's just super funny. Anyways, these people are lost. One dude's the one boyfriend's ring the map. He's wearing a blue hat. He's like, "Which way do we go, Braxton?" And Braxton's giving him directions, and the two girls in the back seat are leaning forward, you know, smiling, having fun. Now Braxton and Samantha, they're there. They're on their vacation to lose their virginity. They're finally going all the way. The other two couple are there, and the other two guys are there for the ride. Now, as it all progresses, you think to yourself, I wonder which one of these people was the final girl, even though we, even though that I explained that the final girl is Tommy's sister. So it just goes out the window. But you're going to be thinking that this whole movie, which one of these people was the final girl? And you're going to think to yourself, oh, it's Samantha. It's obvious her because she's the virgin of the group. So it's that obvious at first. When it cuts to them, they pass a hitchhiker. And the also, you also see Pamela Voorhees' tombstone. And this is the movie where you learn Jason's mom's name. Which is also pretty neat. I, I thought I would just throw that fact out there. Anyways, they pass the hitchhiker. They taunt her. Honk the horn. Hey, girl, you got a sister? The girl shows the sign and says, F you. And she goes to sit down by the stump and she eats a banana. As she's eating the banana, Jason puts a knife through her throat, killing her. And the girl squeezes the banana as she dies. Pretty decent kill, I might add. I'm not gonna lie, that kill was pretty decent. The kills in this movie are good and awesome. Like, there's a lot of good kills in this movie. 
and they don't arrive to their cap to their house that night so when you think about it great what are we at sunday night now no wait no all right back to the timeline thing and as i would say in the last video either part two friday part two started on thursday after alice was killed went to friday then ended late friday night early saturday morning possibly part three was sunday night or thursday night all right all right you, you still with me all right so that's thursday or fr sunday the next day which is monday was part three or part three was on a friday all right so we're either we're either we're on a saturday or we're on a no we'd be on a sunday what am i thinking crap i forgot because it was saturday night when the police cleaned up the mess so sunday would be the next day so either we're on a sunday or we're on a hold up a monday or tuesday it's like movie pick your time because this is gonna keep getting confusing i highly doubt it was another weekend i highly doubt a whole nother week went by so we're probably up to sunday now at this point that's okay it's all right thankfully after this the confusion can finally stop because part five there's a time jump part six there's another time jump and part seven another time jump and so on and so forth so these crazy dates can stop so i'm glad that this juggling is over because this is what drives me crazy about jason's human years this set of movies drives me insane and how come their moms are okay with it with this group of friends going to near camp crystal lake then the Hag was the Higgins Haven thing mentioned on the news? Uh, there are probably a bunch of adults at this point, so it's just let's just skip to it and move forward, please, because it's annoying and tiring. So anyway, it's that evening, and we see them arrive at their cabin. They get greeted by Tommy and his sister. Everything seems all good and peachy. Tommy gets to witness a sex scene, which is kind of funny. Like he's a little kid, so he gets his, he gets introduced to all that stuff. Ugh, it's just just a wow moment. And yes, I'm rushing this one kind of because, like I said, it's my least favorite Friday movie, and also it's I'm covered most of the basics. Like the one couple's there to lose their virginity, which is discussed before Tommy sees the one scene, and we're kind of to the morning now. Then, where we see where we see the group of friends walking through the woods to go to the lake and they run into two twin girls who f help them find the lake and then the one girl forgets her towel so she has to go back to the car to get her towel like it's real entertainment there and tommy and trish end up catching up with them and watch and tommy sees most of them skinny dipping like these scenes it's the get to knowing scenes are good and they keep telling and they told trish there's a party that night so they're all gonna party and have fun. It's like, okay. It's like, Jason took his precious time with this one, not compared to the one in part three, where he killed everyone right a freaking way. Like I said, Jason was sleeping in part three and they all bothered him. Part, part four, he's just taking his sweet time I feel like Jason got lost on his way back to Camp Crystal Lake with Part 4. Like, he just got lost. And he just found them partying. It's like, hmm, I wonder what's going on in here. All nonchalantly. It's irritating and insulting. And it's just... <coughs> they gotta pick and choose. Yep.
I'm back. I just, I needed a minute to calm down. Because at the end of the day, when you think about it, when you think about it, they're, they're rehashing the same thing over and over again. I get the skinny dipping scene on the game of no scene. But what I don't understand is in the third movie, Jason didn't take a day to kill him. He just took his time. And I'm going to stop complaining about this part because honestly, it's not going to get us anywhere. So anyways, Tommy and Trish are driving through the woods and the car breaks down. Tommy tries to fix it. And they meet, and as they're fixing it, we get in a sort of jump scare where you think it's Jason, but it's Sandra's brother from Friday the 13th Part 2. And we don't know much about this guy at first. At first he says he's hunting. So it's like, okay, so this guy's just another body, another random that's going to get killed. Because he doesn't mention he's Sandra's brother until later in the film. And anyways, they take him to his house. And... We learned some cool things about Tommy. Like I said, the redeeming parts of the movie are coming. So anyways, you learned that Tommy makes masks. And oh my gosh, they're amazing. He's like a little Tom Savini. It was amazing. I mean, his mask stuff was pretty cool. And his puppets he made, amazing. Like this, like I said, parts of the movie redeem themselves as the movie progresses. The movie gets better. And you got a love and hate relationship to this movie. Which... I can get over, as I said before. Anyways, after Tommy's done showing off his collection, Trish and the guy walk out, Saunders brother walk out, and it's getting dark out, and the weather's starting to get bad, and there's a fourth wall joke. If you blink, you miss it. it basically, she said the weather's been real bad lately, which I love that. Like, that got me a light chuckle out of that, because a fourth wall joke is always funny. Anyways, after that ensues, we basically see the party scene, like everyone's drinking beer and they're all having fun. We see he, we see Chris Van Glover do a crazy dance that the actor improvised, I might add. Teddy's hanging on the one twin with a teddy bear saying, hey, you want to kiss my teddy? So it's all cheesy, generic stuff, and all in all, I like the party scene. It's just decent, it was well written, it was good. As the party scene goes on, they turn on some music and start dancing and having fun. Then there's a drinking contest towards later on, and there and the girl's like, "What do I win?" And it was one of the twins, and the twin gets a dance with the one boyfriend. Anyways, the one it's not Samantha's, it's not Samantha and Braxton either. It's not them. Anyways, as the other girl looks at him, and says, "I'm going for a swim." The other guy looks confused and starts dancing with the other girl, and the girl's wearing his hat. The other girl is rightfully mad, and the girl goes outside and goes to an inner tube boat, a raft boat. She gets naked, walks into the swims to the boat. As she's in the boat, she hears some noises, and she thinks it's her boyfriend, and then she's saying, screw you, Paul. Oh, and his name was Paul, by the way. I just now remembered his name was Paul. That's embarrassing. Anyways, she's like, screw you, Paul, and within seconds, Jason stabs a knife through her through the raft, through her the back. Again, these kills are top notch. These kills are good. These kills are amazing. And this is what is redeeming about the movie. Slowly. And like I said, you feel bad for some of the characters. And some of the characters you don't feel bad for. But this one I genuinely felt bad for. Because she seemed like a nice person. Well, they all, a lot of them seem like genuinely nice people. Anyways, the party continues. Paul realizes what he did was wrong. And he proceeds to go outside too. And go with his girlfriend be be with her have fun he goes to the inner he swims to the inner tube and he discovers her dead body he gets scared he starts to swim towards the docks and he gets a harpoon to the freaking nuts he gets a harpoon to the nuts and jason lifts up and throws him through the air so this dude took a harpoon to the nuts again jason is just being brutal with these kills i love it it's just everything about it is awesome and as the movie progresses, we see that Ted is trying to hit on the other sister now since one failed. The other sister went for Chris Van Glubber. The two of them went into Paul's room 
and yes, they're doing the deed. And as they're doing that, Teddy is trying to hit on the other twin sister. I think it's Terry and Tina. So Paul, Ted's hitting on the other sister, doing the same stick that failed with the other twin. And it is hilarious watching him fail. As he's as as Terry failed that, he actually finds some old-fashioned silent movie porn and. Like I said, they watch it. All right, what is up with this movie and the porn scenes? It's like we had the aerobics porn scene, and now we got this scene. It's like interesting. It's like okay, oh yeah. And here's a fun fact about the about the wrath kill. That kill made Ted White almost quit the filming because he threatened to quit because they weren't that one girl. It was the middle of the winter, towards the end, and that girl was suffering from hypothermia. Needless to say, that after that scene, the director and Ted White were on edge with each other. There, I'm going to leave the link in the description of the guy who described it better than I did because, like I said, I lack the editing software and the know-how and the knowledge. I'm just enjoying talking about these movies. Anyways, back to the movie. Anyways, after watching some silent movie porn, the twin gets a little gets ready to leave because it starts to rain. She walks up, up the stairs, knocks on the door says hey I'm leaving and the other girl's like leave without me and the girl just angrily walks out she puts on a raincoat walks towards her bike tries to unlock it and as she's trying to unlock it when there's a lightning strike she gets speared in the stomach again another good off-screen kill like look at me I'm, I'm praising off-screen kills like really t really gamer man you're praising off-screen kills yes I am Yes, I am praising off screen kills because for once they're doing they're doing a lot better with them. Anyways, then you see a cut of the body being thrown into the wall. Nice touch. Now we cut back to Tommy's mom coming home from her run and the power's out. She's doing her thing, trying to get everything fixed. She walks outside thinking Tommy and Trish are outside and mm, uh, off screen kill. You just see her scared face like this. That's all you see that indicates she got killed. And, and there's a cut ending where you see her body in the bathtub, but the filmmakers didn't want to do another dream sequence ending. Which I kind of like. The dream sequences were getting old after part three. So it wouldn't make much sense to do another one. It's just... It's just ups upsetting because you don't know what happened. Maybe she got spooked by an animal, but nope. Jason got her off screen. Ugh. Again, I said I hate off-screen kills most of the time. Because when you don't see what happens or don't have a better idea of what happens, it's horrible. It's like, really? Just a facial reaction. Ugh. Anyways, moving on. After she gets killed, Jason literally goes into the cabin house. Like, he's basically in the ca other house at this point. And during all that, Tommy and Trish are coming home, too. And it's ridiculous. And yes, I'm leaving out some scenes because I don't want to spoil the whole movie for you. Because I do want you all to watch the movie. I would really like it if you all watched the movie. So I'm not going to try and spoil every little last detail. Also, I can't remember every detail of the movie. But anyways, as it's raining, Trish says she's going out to look for her mom, and she finds Sandra's, Sandra's brother. And Sandra's brother's mad. He's like, what are you doing here? And the girl's like, what are you trying to do? Kill me. Sandra's brother thought Trish was Jason. Anyway, starting that, he explains why he's there to hunt down Jason, and he's Sandra's brother. Now, back to the time frame thing. And I, thankfully, this is the last time I get to talk about it, and I am thrilled. Part 2, Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, Sunday, Monday, Theory 1, Tuesday. So it's supposed to, in my first theory, it's Wednesday. Alright, so Sandra died all the way back to Friday night, which is Tuesday, Monday, Sunday, Saturday, Friday, five days ago. Other theory, she died about a week ago. A little over a week ago. So, by then, things are discovered. Because in part two, the top, part three, I mean, the, the murder discussed. 
Oh, and if you're wondering, Sandra was the girl that got speared in part two. Thought I would mention that. So, anyways, Jason's in the ha Corey Feldman's bragging to Teddy, throwing Teddy some panties, going into the kitchen to celebrate. It's a Ted. Where's the corkscrew? He gets stabbed in the hand with a corkscrew, and then he takes a cleaver to the face. Now, this that kill again was top notch, and Chris Van Glover. It's been, it was actually a reference to the, in the Friday the 13th game 2 with Chris Van Glubbard. It's just, I like how this is referenced, and I like how this kill was one of the iconic kills. But Jason isn't done. Nope, 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 nope. Son, Samantha and Braxton are upstairs taking a shower together, having fun, you know, kissing, saying they're in love. Saunders like, I'm going to go to the back. Get ready for bed. Meet you in the bottom bunk. Because this is, was the night where they were going to go all the way. Like, this is the two cup. This is the two people I genuinely felt bad for. And, and all the Friday the 13th movies. These are the people I felt the most bad for. I'll explain. Because you can tell they were genuinely in love with each other. And it was genuine. Sure, Paul and Ginny were, was genuine, genuine. Rick and... Chris was good, but this one you could tell they were in love. Like, and she finally pronounced her, her love for him. Like, it was perfect. And then Jason had to ruin it. So, anyways, as she's as she's as she walks off, Jason enters the bathroom, and this scene's replacing the stereotype of the girl in the shower with the guy in the shower. So he's as he's singing, he's like, "Oops, drop my soap there, Ted." And then Jason comes and pushes his face into the wall, killing him. Now, another top-notch kill, and you see Jason doing this kill, too. It's perfect. I love it. Jason is being relentless. And after Jason killed him, Jason deals with Teddy then, too. Like, Teddy's watching the rest of his porn. The film reel stops. He goes to investigate. Jason stabs him with a knife through the screen and kills him. <laughs> it's just a perfect kill. Again, like Jason is genuinely killing everyone in his way in this movie, and I love it. So as the movie progresses, Sandra decides to go see her boyfriend. Not Excuse me. Not Sandra. Samantha goes to see her boyfriend. And she discovers his dead body. And she runs down the stairs in the most secure town in human history. As she tries to open the door. She takes an axe to the stomach. Dead. It's just. Great. The one girl I wanted to live died. While all that's happening. Tommy is in the house alone. And Trish and... Saunders brother arrive back at the cabin and they're like we're gonna go check out the other cabin because they think basically Jason's there and as they go back to the cabin they discover a lot of stuff and eventually Saunders brother ends up in the basement with and he sees Jason and I see the most overacting again in part three. He's killing me! He's killing me! As Jason's killing him with a garden tool. The dude is shouting, he's killing me, he's killing me. Like, we can see that Jason's killing you, dude. You don't gotta announce it to us. It's just funny. Anyways, Tommy's sister is scared, backs up and runs. To runs back to Tommy's house and they, they begin locking up the doors barricading the windows it's like what's that going to do how's that going to stop him anyways then Saunders brother gets th Saunders brother <coughs> excuse me Saunders brother gets thrown through the window and then Jason immediately walks through the window grabbing Tommy so Tommy's sister starts beating Jason with a hammer senselessly and then she stabs him in the head with the back of the hammer. Jason falls back, lets go of Tommy, and then just bursts through the door like he's a soldier or something. He throws the hammer at him, misses. It's just insane. Like, Jason takes a lot of abuse in this movie, too. 
So as they run upstairs, they barricade Tommy's door with the bookshelf, and Jason tries to get in. And as he fails to get in, he comes back with an axe to break the door down. As he's breaking the door down, Trish grabs that Commodore 64 and breaks it on Jason's head, electrocuting him. Jason falls to the ground, and so Tommy's sister looks at him and says, I want you to run. I'm going to distract him. So he thinks to herself, oh no, not another thing. They're going to get rid of the fallen girl trope, because it's, it makes you wonder what they did wrong. And it's sad, really, because... This is where it all ends, almost. So Tommy agrees to run, and Trish runs out the door, and Jason chases her, and almost wants to chase Tommy, but chooses Trish, for whatever reason. But here's the thing. As Trish is running, you see Tommy reading one of the newspapers, and he actually starts shaving his head, trying to make himself look like Jason. And while Trish is running through the house, she, she ends up jumping out of the window from the other cabin, and it's like, she jumped out a window and landed on the ground. Oh, I forgot to mention the other twin that died. She got thrown out the window. Yeah, I forgot to mention that one. My bad. <laughs> Anyways, I'm not good at revealing I'm new to this. It's just, it's one of the kills I forgot. And the girl landed on a car, by the way. I literally forgot to mention that part. Ugh. Anyways, as a girl, anyways, Tommy's sister then starts run, gets up because Jason sees her move, he's about to go finish her off. Jason even looks tired too, I think. And as she's running back to the cabin, she hears Tommy. Tommy calls her name Trish, and she's like, "Tommy, I told you to run." Like she's just, she's she's done. Like she's out of energy. She's tired. She's at the end. And then Jason shows up again, and she stabs at him once, misses, swings the machete at him again, hitting him in the, in the hand. Like, cutting him inside the hand, like, in between his middle fingers. Like, that was top-notch. Eventually, they end up chasing each other to the living room where she splashes his side. Jason just has him, had enough, and he just pushes her to the ground. She drops the machete. Jason's about to kill her. Then Tommy Jarvis says, Jason, Jason. Jason looks at Tommy. And if Jason sees himself as Tommy. He has his hand out. He walks towards him. He wants to see it. Like Jason thinks that's Tom it's him. It's remarkable how Tommy was able to fool Jason. Like this is the last time where you see Jason get genuinely fooled to the point where he can stop himself from killing. Until part six, anyway, but that's different. But anyways, as th Jason's about to touch Tommy, Trish hits him in the face with a machete. You see Jason's ugly face, and by God, is it ugly. Trish looks scared. She drops the machete out of fear, seeing Jason's ugly face. Tommy doesn't hesitate. He, he stabs Jason right in the side of his face, right here with the machete. And Jason's head slides down the blade, and it goes all the way through his head. And now, they hug, and they think it's over, but Jason's trying to, about to get up. Tommy's not having it. He slashes at Jason with the machete, shouting, Die! 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 While his sister's saying, Tommy! Tommy! Die! Die! And the rest is history from that. It cuts to them in the hospital, and... Towards the end, Tommy hugs Trish, and the screen ends with Tommy staring at the camera, which was foreshadowing for what they had planned, but it got ruined. Because people, don't get me wrong, Jason was a good killer, but what they had planned for Tommy was amazing, and it's a shame they scrapped it. I wish they didn't scrap what happened, what they had planned for Tommy. But, you know, such is life. Life moves on. You can't do it. What's done is done. I'm just, I'm just glad I can stop talking about the human years of Jason, because now I'm at part five, and I can finally stop discussing that timeline theory, because that was getting annoying. And anyways, there was a cut ending for a dream sequence. They didn't do it because they didn't want to do another dream ending, obviously. But yeah, I'm just going to leave it at this movie was not the, my favorite Jason movie, 
but it's up there. For here's the total pool so far. It goes part three, part two, part four. Now I like part four for the kills. Like the kills are entertaining and brutal. Don't get me wrong, the kills in the movie are brutal. I'm gonna like that. But that's about it. That's what's the redeeming quality of part four. Now for the other for the later zombie year ranks, ugh. I'm not looking forward to watching part eight. Like I've already seen parts one through four, so they were fresh in my head. But part eight, I'm not looking forward to watching that one again. That one's the most boring Jason movie out there. Excuse me. If you had to skip any of the Jason movies, I would say skip part eight. All right, you skip part eight. You obviously watch part one, then you watch part two. Definitely watch part three. Part four, definitely watch that one too because that's another good one because it's definitely it is Jason's definitive death. But honestly, if you want to start with a Jason movie. Watch part three first. Trust me, the human years are a decent was a decent trilogy for Jason. Because now we're getting to the zombie years. Well, first we gotta go through copycat. Then we're gonna be in the zombie years. And then the zombie years is just when everything goes out the bucket. Jason's now the main character. There's no doubt about it. Anyways, thank you all for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Happy October fourth.